This is the Freebeat Morph. It is a two-in-one e-bike, they say. There's probably one very important question you're asking yourself right now, which is, why am I not going anywhere? The exercise bike market is massive. People go to gyms for spin classes. There are apps where you can train at home from a bike that is designed to be stationary. E-bikes, in my opinion, are the exact opposite of that. They're designed to take you places. They're designed to be fun. You can get some exercise, but that is not the main purpose. The purpose is, I think, entertainment, travel, maybe commuting. Freebie says they have created something that can do both jobs. I know you want to go for a bike ride, but we're not actually going to go anywhere. I know this is a little hard for him to understand too. One of the most common questions people that are new to electric bikes ask is, can you charge it when you pedal? And 99.9% .9 of the time, the answer is no. That wouldn't really make sense while you're riding to try and charge the bike up because it's more efficient for your pedaling power to propel you forward than it is to convert that pedaling power into electrical energy, then turn it back into mechanical energy. There's just losses that are gonna happen you can never get back. But the Freebeat does something completely different. It does charge while pedaling if you don't wanna go anywhere. Not only that, but they have apps. I'm using one right now where we try and match our pedaling cadence to the beat of the music and what's shown on screen. It gives me a score, 100%, 98%. I'm doing pretty good for my first time trying this out. Shows me how many calories I'm burning. Shows my cadence, which is 59. So that'd be 59 rotations per minute. As much as I would prefer to actually go somewhere, I can see that if it was a rainy day, cloudy day, miserable weather, this is kind of fun. And from the little pedaling I did right there, it says that I earned 1.6 miles, meaning I have charged the battery enough that I could take this off of the stand and use it in the e-bike mode and go 1.6 miles with the energy I just put in. I'll have to do some math to see if that really makes sense. It says that I charged 19 watt hours. This is a 720 watt hour battery. So a 48 volt, 15 amp hour battery. I've done just shy of 20 watt hours. So obviously it's gonna take me a lot of exercise to actually get this thing charged up. But the fact is it can do it where most e-bikes can't. You might think this would be simple to implement on any existing bike. Well, can't we just throw a stand on the rear wheel and connect it to an app or some sort of buttons on screen and regenerate power? And the answer to that is no. Typically with a geared hub motor, which this appears to be at first glance, when you pedal, you are turning the rear wheel, but you are not turning over the motor. There's no resistance on the motor. They have a one-way bearing or a one-way clutch mechanism. And the reason that's there is so the rear wheel can freewheel or coast. This motor, however, is different. They've done some extra little wizardry of some sort in here so that the motor can provide resistance and regenerate power when you're in this mode. But when you're riding it like an e-bike, it still feels like any other geared hub motor. I'm not 100% sure how exactly they've pulled that off. I haven't torn it apart to see exactly how it works. But I think what they've done is basically made it so that motor can engage the magnets and things when you're pedaling. So it kind of operates like a direct drive motor when you have it in stationary mode and then it operates like a typical geared hub motor when you're riding it like a bike. And the idea here is to save you money because now you don't need an exercise bike and an e-bike. You can buy one of these and get both. And not that this matters, but I do have to point out that charging the bike by using your own physical strength and then riding the bike with the battery you've charged is not gonna be cheaper than plugging into an outlet or plugging into a wall. Will cost more 
to ride commuting to and from work if you're strictly looking at the cost of food, calories, what it takes for your body to burn the energy versus electricity. However, you're gonna obviously be in better shape if you charge it yourself. I'm gonna try a scenic ride. So the first thing I showed you was basically a game where you're following the music, but they also have rides you can follow along with. Here we have one that says France, one that says New Zealand, Got a little background music. So I have cadence, average cadence, best cadence. It's showing my speed that I would be traveling. I'm guessing the output right in the middle of the screen is probably the wattage I'm putting in. So just a nice easy cadence, 40 some watts. That is, seems about right. I assume on some of these rides that the resistance will change. That's something that they showed in their advertising. I'm still figuring this out. One thing that is new, I've noticed, is this cable right here that goes up to the saddle, and that is there so it can detect if you're on the saddle or not. So in certain exercises, they may prompt you to get up off the saddle, pedal harder, and it knows if you're doing it and gives you extra points. Let's pedal faster. Then we're getting 150 watts. Look, I'm gonna pass this guy. How fast can I go? 20 miles an hour. Whew. And if I stop pedaling, my output goes down to zero. This is so weird. All right, that's a scenic ride. Let's try, let's try a studio class start. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to be doing. Oh, this is one where you, even though there's a person guiding you, you're supposed to follow the beat too. This is a little harder than the other part because you can't see it on screen. It's not as obvious. You just have to listen. Oh, and I see it says auto resistance on. Here we go. Resistance. Let's turn that off. So I was only at a resistance of 10 before. I just bumped it up to 26. It does go harder. Let's see, 36? Oh man, this feels like I'm cranking up a hill. Let's add another 46. I may. Let's try it. So this is simulating a hill. This is, this is weird, but this actually is working better than I thought it would. So I just shifted down into an easier gear as if this was a hill. I'm gonna crank this. We're just gonna go for it. Can I crank it all the way up to 100? All right, this is 100. I think if you're, if you're spinning fast enough, it feels smoother for some reason. If you slow down, it feels kind of strange. All right, so I'm gonna shift up all the way, so I am at max resistance of 100. I am in seventh gear, and yeah, this is like, I really gotta stand up and I could put all my weight on this. That's how much it's resisting me. I gotta be adding a ton of power back into the battery now. So I did like changing the resistance manually, but if you're following one of the instructor classes that they put out, the resistance is going to adjust automatically for you. And just so you don't get bored, Freebeat tells me that they add new classes on a regular basis. So I have now put three miles back into the bike. I've put 35 watt hours back in. I have a score, don't know what that means other than I guess you just keep track and see if you did better than your last exercise. I didn't get this far into it, but there is also a social aspect to the app that they have. You can create your own profile, add your friends, you can compete with them, as well as other people on the freebie community. I, I'm contemplating this because the idea seems gimmicky. And I mean that in a nice way. I love innovation. I love new things. 
but the idea that you could put an exercise bike into an e-bike, but then it's still an e-bike and it doesn't feel like an exercise bike. So far, this thing does what they advertise it to do. And I thought it'd be weird. I thought that it wouldn't work well. And they've surprised me. It, I genuinely mean this. I wasn't sure if I would like this bike at all or if I would like this exercise bike function, but it works. It, have they tapped into a new market that is gonna sell like crazy? I don't know. I wish, this is something I wish people could experience for themselves. I can't find any faults in the exercise uh, function of the bike other than the fact that you have to use the app. As far as I know, that's the only way to make it work. If the app wasn't open right now and I didn't have my phone sitting up on the handlebars, there would be no way to know that this bike can even do this. This would rot. This would just look like an ordinary bike other than this one random cable right here. So now I have to answer the question of, does it ride like an ordinary electric bicycle? So to remove this bike from the stand, all I have to do is loosen this. I just have to get it wide enough for the axle to fall out. There we go. And I'm done. There's also an outdoor portion of the app. So you've got maps, you've got navigation. I wish I would have gotten more into the writing portion of the app, but that's all the writing I was able to do for right now. Unfortunately, my health just doesn't allow me to ride every day and as much as I'd like, but I am slowly getting back to it. Or if the phone is too small for your indoor exercising, you can project this onto your TV for a better experience. Like a lot of bikes these days, there is a step over version as well as a step through. So for riding, the display is fairly basic, black and white, mileage, battery level, assist level, and how far you've gone. You can see I'm just getting started. Whoa, pedal assist is a little jumpy. So I'm just like ghost pedaling right now. I'm not putting in any real effort and I'm in pedal assist three doing just shy of 20 miles an hour. So it's not lacking on power on the flats. So we've got a basic Shimano thumb shifter with seven speeds on the right hand side. It's using a half twist for the throttle. It doesn't have any trouble picking up speed. I'm not sure what the limit is at, but on just throttle right there, easily did about 24, 25. I'm going to head up some hills right here and see how does the power feel up the hills. So far, uh, it feels like a 750 watt motor. Power feels pretty good. I do feel like there's a little bit of a clunk. It's subtle. It's, it's not anything to be concerned about, but when I first get the throttle on, there's a, like I can feel something catch. I assume it works that way because there has to be a, mechanism inside the motor that makes this work when it's on the stand because it feels like it's a geared hub motor right now in a normal configuration that when you let off the power the motor's coasting and it's not creating any drag as far as i know there's no way to activate that when you are just riding the bike on the road you can only do that through the app so uphill, starting to slow down a little, 12 miles an hour. This is a fairly steep hill. Speed's a little jumpy right there for some reason. 11, 10. Every once in a while it jumps up to like 15, but that's not accurate. I don't know why it's doing that. Most of the time it reads accurately. And big, long, steep downhill we can test out these Logan hydraulic disc brakes. Brakes. Oh yeah. So I could have, if I squeeze just a little bit harder, locked up the rear wheel, just using one brake, and that was, you know, from 20 miles an hour. So uh, I haven't broken the brakes in yet, but even brand new out of the box, they're working just fine. So that's good. They're 180 millimeter rotors, uh, hydraulic brakes with 180s on a fat bike. That's, that's kind of a minimum you want. The suspension fork has a preload adjustment that's this little knob on the left. 
On the right, it has a lockout switch. This is not an air adjustable fork. So that's it. But let's see how the fork does on a little bit of bumpy gravel. Uh, I just noticed I was only using like one or two levels of assist right at first. It only has three levels of assist. That's all it's got. So that kind of explains why assist one is a little bit fast or high. When it's only got three, that makes sense. Suspension fork works. Feels a little stiff, if anything. They do have a nice waterproof connector on the motor. It's coming out the left side here. Motor controller, everything I assume is tucked in nicely in the center of the frame right here. And you can see that like this cable runs up through that channel right behind the seat post here. So if you're gonna go on a nice long ride outside, you could put a more comfortable different saddle. This one is really cushy and quite comfortable, but that is a downside is that one of the uh, sensors is built into the saddle. So if you wanna change that, you're gonna lose that function unless there's some way to add a sensor. I don't even know how that would work. I guess it'd be nice if that sensor was somehow built into the seat post instead. Uh, it's probably simpler to put it there. They've got a nice seat, thankfully. Even though the bike has a fairly straight stem, handlebars don't have much of a rise. It does sit fairly upright. If we step back, you can just see the, the frame is reasonably short for the size and the fork tube is actually fairly long from here all the way up. So you're still sitting fairly upright. Now this tube is kind of high right here. They really couldn't put it any lower with the way the battery is in. I popped this out once just to see how well it comes in and out. Works very easily, it's just key in there, comes right out, but it is like there's no wiggle room. So they couldn't have brought this frame any lower, but they do have to solve that a step through version. So if you need that, they've got it. Shimano tourney, seven speed derailleur, Kenda tires. The question I really needed to answer was, does this ride like any other e-bike or does it feel compromised in some way because of the other function it has? And honestly, if you didn't tell me that it could do those other things and you just said, hey, go ride this bike and try it out, I would have never known. I just honestly thought there was gonna be something about it, whether it was weight or uh, you know, weird motor function or lack of performance or maybe the pedaling would feel weird, but I really just don't have any of that. The headlight is pretty big. It's not dark enough to see how bright it really is, but it looks pretty bright on my hand there. I think that light's gonna be bright enough for riding at night. I like bikes that are different and do weird things. So for that reason, I like it. This is more fun, huh, Charlie? So there it is, the Freebeat Morph. If I didn't know there was an exercise feature built in, I, I, I just wouldn't know. It doesn't detract from the bike at all. It works like any other e-bike will. You really are just getting an exercise bike in an e-bike for free. Other than the app itself, you're not paying for anything extra. So they are launching this bike on Kickstarter right now the early bird price is $11.99, so $1,200. That is a great deal for a 750 watt fat bike with hydraulic brakes. They're showing the estimated delivery is August of this year. So this is a Kickstarter project. They do have to actually come through on production, but as you can see right here, it's real, it does exist. If you're just looking for an e-bike and you're not gonna use the exercise portion, the bike really doesn't have any advantages other than you know a pretty good low entry price. But if you have any thoughts at all about using the exercise function, then it, to my knowledge, is the only one on the market like this. The one thing I will say, having used it now, there's a certain level of satisfaction that comes from knowing that I put a few of the miles into this bike with my own power. I wasn't really expecting that to matter, but it kind of does. You feel like I pedaled this bike here and yeah, I'm using the motor, but guess what? All that power that got me here, I put that in 
at home. It's a weird feeling. I don't exactly know how to put it into words other than I feel accomplished more than I would if I had just plugged it into the wall, which by the way, of course, like any other e-bike, you can do. You don't have to charge this thing by your own pedaling. You can just plug it in like any other e-bike, top it off and go for a ride. But thank you to Freebeat for sending this my way. And I think people that get one will be pleasantly surprised.